Captain, I'm reading an all-powerful entity directly ahead. I concur, Captain. Its power is off the scale. Though I'm reading no intelligence whatsoever. I think I can get a visual. Captain, it's from another franchise. So today's show is a bit of a surprise. We're going to be talking about the original series, Star Trek, with William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy. And this is something that I was sort of struck by because I, I could never imagine that Laney would have been interested in it. But the way it worked out was I have a poster of Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. And she had asked a couple times about seeing the movie. And I said, well, to be able to see that particular film, you really have to understand who the characters are ahead of time. So you have to watch some of the older show, and I'm not sure that you would like it. But she really, she persisted and wanted to see it. So I showed her some of the episodes... And how did, how did you feel about those? I liked the triple one. Right. I, I, I did it sort of systematically. I showed her four episodes, and I tried to do it in, in an order that would perhaps be of interest to her. So we watched The Trouble with Tribbles, and I followed, and that's a funny episode. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of humor. Uh, William Shatner, it's very light. He, he's in good form, good comedic form. Uh, there's a lot of fun things in it. And then I followed that up with City on the Edge of Forever, which arguably is the best episode of the original series. It's got a great dramatic storyline, uh, a lot of poignant moments. Joan Collins is the guest star in it, and it has a good dramatic story, which I thought might appeal to you. And then after that, we, I, I showed her Arena, which is one of the more action-packed episodes. And I did it for two reasons. One is it had some action in it, which I wanted to see if you know that would... Not a lot of those do. They're more morality tales and what have you. But that particular episode has some action. In the second half of it, when Captain Kirk is on the planet, I, I told her it was similar to MacGyver. There were a lot of, and I thought that would appeal to her because she has a huge love for MacGyver, the original series. And then the last episode I showed her was Space Seed, which is where we're introduced to the character of Khan, played by Ricardo Montalban. And it was essential to get to that point in order to be able to show her the movies, which we haven't done yet. But she's so engrossed in the series at this point that she keeps asking to watch more episodes. So we'll get to that when, when, it, when we're done with the episodes, I guess. Okay, this is an old series, older than anything that you've seen before. So it was made in the 60s. It was made before Daddy was born. That's how old it is. Why do you like this? I like it because it has to do with space, and I really like space. And kind of like Star Wars, it has the Millennium Falcon, but this has the Star Trek ship. Starship Enterprise, right? Mm -hmm. And they like to push buttons, and I'm a big button pusher. <laughs> yes, they have a lot of controls and switches on the ship, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, you've, you've often expressed an interest in space and astronauts and, and things like that. And this would be a, a, a future that's projected, you know, out ahead of even the astro or past the astronauts where we go out and we explore space. So it's, it's an established thing. And the Starship Enterprise, you've told me a couple times you find very cool. Why do you, why do you like the Starship Enterprise so much? Because it's big and... All of the people have a certain thing, a certain job to do, and they and you get to see every room basically of what every person's job. Right. Is. So like they're living on this big starship, and there's a lot of people, and they all have a role to fill, and they're all working together like a team. That always appealed to me about Star Trek. I always really that's one of the reasons I got into the field I got into because when I watched that as a kid, I liked how they all worked as a team and they worked together in order to to get. To, to a certain spot to, to achieve a goal. And I really like that about it. And I don't know if you noticed this or not, but back then um, they were already way ahead of, of the times because they, they were showing a hopeful future for us. Because at that time, and, and again, this was before daddy was born, but um, our country and the world at large there was a lot of turmoil. People weren't getting along. There were wars. Different things were going on. And this show had people from all different parts of the world on the same ship, in the same crew, working together. 
So it was sort of trying to say, you know, despite what's going on, in the future we're all going to get along. Our whole planet's going to get along and we're going to go out and explore the stars. Did you kind of notice that at all or not really? Did you notice how they were from all parts of the country? Like the one guy mm -hmm. in Trouble with Tribbles, he speaks Rush. He's got a Russian accent. At that time, we were in the Cold War with Russia, which means we were, we were not getting along with Russia at all at that time. And all of a sudden, they had a Russian uh, a crew member on the Enterprise with people from the United States and people from Africa and Asia and all different places where we weren't getting along. So that might not exactly, while you might not understand that, it, it shows you, you see that they're getting along in the future. What other things about it do you like? I like how they work as a team. They work as a team, yeah. And I like how they all worry about their captain when he goes somewhere. So when he beams to a planet or he gets pulled off the ship, they were worried about him. Who's your favorite character? Um, Mr. Spock. How come? Why do you like Mr. Spock? A lot of people like Mr. Spock. Why do you like Mr. Spock? Because he only has one emotional feeling, so when someone tells a joke, he doesn't get the joke, but then he says something f funny, and then he doesn't get it. Yeah, he doesn't realize that he's funny. He, he, he plays that very well, and he's a Vulcan, and they, they don't have emotions. He's half human, half Vulcan, and they play on that a little bit later in some of the episodes you haven't seen. Okay, so out of the four episodes I showed you, Trouble with Tribble, City on the Edge of Forever, Arena, and Space Seed, if you remember them, which was your favorite? Tribble. Yeah, the Tribbles episode. How come? Well, and the one where the captain gets pulled to the planet with the alligator with the disco ball eyes. <laughs> yes, that's Arena, and he's a Gorn. And yeah, the costuming at that time was a little bit interesting. So yes, he does have disco ball eyes. Good, good, good for you. He's an alligator. I like that. So, okay, why were those your favorite episodes? The Tribble one because... The tribbles were really cute, and I liked the noises that they made. And there was one scene where the captain gets covered in tribbles, and there's, and then one by one, the tribbles come down after all of the most of the tribbles went down from the. Right, so the, the scene, he's, he's under this hatch, and inside the hatch is supposed to be this grain that they're trying to safeguard because it has to be used on a planet. And they open up the hatch above his head, and all these tribbles fall out and cover him. <laughs> he's covered completely over his head. And then he kind of digs his way out of the tribbles, and he's talking. He's talking to all these government officials and everything, and it's a very serious thing. He's trying to be serious. And meanwhile, tribbles are coming out of the hatch and hitting him in the head and what have you, <laughs> which... I'm sure with some stagehands having a really good time up above him, throwing the treble at him, like, you know, having a lot of fun. Because a couple times he looks up there and it's almost like you can see William Shatner going, y y y are you going to keep doing that? It was <laughs> very funny. I agree with you. So they didn't mean to do it? No, I think they did. I think they were or having a good time with they him. they weren't supposed to do it? Uh, I think it was part of it, but I think the stagehands were having a little fun with him too. But it's a, your point, if I'm, if I'm hearing you right, is it's a very fun and comedic episode. There was a lot of... A lot of points where you could laugh in it and have fun with it. And, and it had a nice, uh, light-hearted atmosphere to it. So you like that one. And the, what was it called again? Arena, the, mm -hmm. other, the other episode, yes. Um, I like how the second half is MacGyver-like and how he makes something. Right. I don't he has know to, if it's... Uh, he's, he's put on the planet and he's pitted against the captain of another vessel, which, as, as Lainey said looks like a big walking alligator with disco ball eyes. Now, now let's touch on that for one minute. Um, even though he looked that way, did you believe he was an alien, or, di or did it not work for you because you thought it was too hokey or too silly? Or did it work? No, I, I liked him. Right. I thought he was silly, but I still liked him as the monster. I also liked how he was, I think he's like, between a turtle, an alligator, and a disco ball. <laughs> With the disco ball eyes, a shape as an alligator, and a turtle being really slow. Yeah, he was very slow. So he's, uh, Captain Kirk is pitted against the alien, and they have no weapons, uh, and they're supposed to fight to the death, which it, it, we never get to that point. Because as a morality tale, it has a, a better ending than that. We, we don't resort to violence. But anyway, Captain Kirk has to use his wits and his knowledge and his science 
uh, knowledge and what have you in order to construct something to defeat the alien who's much more he's much stronger than him and much more powerful than him. And so three he, times his size. Right. So like MacGyver, he has to come up with something. Uh, he has to use his mind in order to win that battle. And that's, I think he got some of it from Mr. Spock because he's really smart. Well, yeah, Mr. Spock is really smart. But that's a good thing to touch on with this series is that it deals a lot with science and using your brains versus brawn. You know, cer certainly William Shatner gets into enough uh, physical fights to keep things interesting for the viewers, especially at that time period. But it was a very thought-provoking show in a lot of ways. In, in the morality part of it, which means they're trying to tell a story so that by the end of it you learn something. You learn something uh -huh. about your world or about you know how to handle things. So like a story with a lesson? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what they were going for. And, and they do that. And, and it works well in that way. Certainly there are episodes that don't hold up as well. Now, we watch the versions which have the digitally remastered special effects. And, you know, I'm one of these, uh, you know, old school, you know, purists. But I have to say with that particular series, the, new, the newer style special effects fit seamlessly in with the actual actors and the physical, you know, uh, sets and what have you. And it actually enhances the, each episode because the old special effects while I give them a lot of credit, especially for the time period and what they had to work with, these are so much better and it, it helps the show. So I think that that's helping you uh, enjoy the show more. Because when I was a kid, you could literally see the strings holding the, the spaceships in space and what have you. So th they really do help a lot. So I, I recommend the digitally remastered special effects for this. Okay, let's talk City on the F Edge of Forever for a minute. That was the episode with Joan Collins. That's the one where Dr. McCoy goes back in time. He goes through that archway. And then he's all like, ooh, with yes. his eyes. Yes. And then his eyes are all red. And then he looks pale and sick. So you remember it then? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, it's the guardian of forever. And he, he, he goes back, he leaps through that archway. And then the landing party on the planet realizes the ship isn't up there anymore. And so what's happened is Dr. McCoy has gone back in time and he has done something back in time, back in history, that's changed the rest of history so that the Enterprise no longer exists. And they only exist because they were on the planet at that time. So Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock have to go through the archway back in time and try to locate Dr. McCoy and fix what he did. And it turns, and we don't want to give this away if you haven't seen it, but what, what they had to go through to do that was very... Uh, emotional and, and poignant as they did that. Did you understand that episode and how did you feel about it? I did understand it and I really liked it. All right. And uh, as a side note, this is something that I wondered uh, a, a couple of times now if, you know, I know Quentin Tarantino is going to be making a Star Trek film and they're, they're doing another Star Trek film and they're bringing out all these new television series. There's going to be a lot of new <laughs> Star Trek series now. And I've often wondered if they would use that Guardian of Tomorrow as a premise where, you know, they have Starfleet personnel stationed on that planet and they travel through the archway and go back in history and back in time to explore things and what have you. I thought that would be a unique premise. Similar in a way to Stargate, but not entirely. Uh, there's so several uh, shows that have kind of touched on the history portion. Now, Stargate would be the, the archway portion, but... The show Voyagers back in the 80s, and I guess there was a show called Sliders in the late 90s, early 2000s, I think, where they kind of went back through history and slid through there. I thought that, and Quantum Leap, of course, uh, handles some of that subject matter, but I thought this would be an interesting premise for that. I'm encouraged that you like the stories and that you found them interesting and you followed them. I think that's great. I think it's, it says something about how good the show must have actually been if somebody from your generation and your age now can enjoy that based on all the things that are out now that are so much more uh, effects laden and, and faster moving. Um, is there anything in it that you didn't like? Mm, no. Okay. Would you recommend anything that scared you? Mm, no. Okay. Would you recommend it to kids your age? Well, and from a parenting standpoint, I can't recall anything in any of the episodes that would be too heavy or intense. Uh, I'm sure you're probably familiar with the series, but 
it's been kind of a great thing that Lainey was interested in it. And we've gone back and revisited some of these episodes and watching them with her. And actually, Colton liked them too. He watched the Tribbles episode and loved it. And he was the one that pointed out in that episode and another episode, especially the fight scene in the Tribbles episode, he's like, they used funny music there and it made the scene even funnier. That's a four-year-old pointing that out. And I was floored. So, and I've been able to re-experience these shows through your eyes and through Colton's eyes. And so it's been like they've come back to life for me. So I, I highly recommend it. Yummy or crummy? Yummy. And yummy for me, but we do it like this because it's Star, Star Trek. Yes. I know. Daddy's warped. <laughs> okay. I like that. Yep.